something very close to my heart. We're coming into the U.S. and it has, for lack of a better phrase, upset some people. What is it about sources of information, about language, that makes people think that they have to try to control it? They don't like what it says. It's pretty straightforward. I mean, why doesn't anyone report the fact that uh, there's a very straightforward way to deal with the what's alleged to be the gravest threat to peace in the world? Well, they don't want to hear that. Uh, and that's pretty normal. Uh, it's, uh, uh, in the case of Al Jazeera, there's something else as well. There's a background of anti-Muslim racism, which is quite deep. And uh, that's part of it. And it is deep. Actually, one of, one of the funniest press conferences I've ever read about, it was partially recorded, was a couple of years ago under the Bush administration. The Emir of Qatar came to Washington, and Colin Powell, who was Secretary of State, tried to urge him to call off Al Jazeera. He didn't like the things they were reporting. And the Emir, I suppose, with a sense of humor or something, gave a press conference in which he sort of gave a mocking speech in which he informed the press about this thing called freedom of the press and how he wasn't going to interfere and so on and so forth. Barely reported, but it must have been pretty funny. I wish I'd been there. But uh, there's a double, and it's true that Al Jazeera, uh, you could read about, uh, say, the bombing of Lebanon. You could see the bombing of Lebanon, the bombing of Gaza. You know, things happening in Iraq on Al Jazeera, which you couldn't see, literally couldn't see them. Because uh, I think uh, at the time, Al Jazeera had two small cable stations that were running it. One of them in uh, Michigan, where there's a big Arab population, and one somewhere up in northern New Hampshire or something. But basically you couldn't see it, no, unless you went to the internet, and nobody knows to do that. Uh, and now they're, yes, they picked up a cable station, and as you say, this protest, a small cable, cable outlet, uh, because you got to control information. And that's been understood for a long time. In fact, uh, it's quite striking that there, there are industries devoted to controlling attitudes and opinions, very specific, explicitly. It's called the public relations industry. You take a look at its founding, its documents, and so on. The goal is control attitudes and opinion. And it's quite striking that the industry developed in the freest countries in the world. It developed in England and the United States about a century ago. And they were the countries that, plenty of restrictions, but they were the most free countries. And uh, the business world and the conservative elements understood very well that it's getting harder to control people by force. And the British Conservative Party, you know, there's hard to control people by force to get into many rights. You know, parliamentary labor parties, uh, when We are interrupting our programming now to go to some breaking news out of Egypt. And Egypt's former leader, Hosni Mubarak, has won a retrial. The 30-year president appealed against his life sentence. He was found guilty in June of conspiracy in the killing of protesters during the revolution in 2011. Ravi Rage is live for us in Cairo. And Ravi, can you elaborate on this verdict for us? Well, the court today, the appeals court, which is one of the highest courts in the country, has decided to accept both the appeals of Hosni Mubarak and the other co-defendants, but also accept the appeals of the prosecutors. Remember, in this same trial, Hosni Mubarak, his sons, his, uh, one of his close friends and his aides, an interior minister, were being tried on multiple charges, uh, including uh, commissioning the uh, attacks on protesters, as well as other corruption charges. 
fact, he was cleared uh, previously on these corruption charges, but handed a life sentence uh, for uh, failing to act or to do anything to stop the killing of protesters. Today, his appeal in the uh, trial um, in the killing of the protesters is accepted, but also the prosecutor's appeal in, uh, against his acquittal on corruption charges has been accepted. And none of this is particularly a surprise. This court is known to be one of the top and best courts in the country. It is very meticulous and goes through every single detail in previous trials and almost always tends to throw out previous convictions on technicality grounds and offer defendants a retrial. All right, Ravi, Mubarak is 84 years old now. What is his uh, current health condition? Well, during his incarceration, he has been reported several times to have uh, suffered from uh, health lapses. He is currently at a military hospital. He's not in the prison hospital where he used to be. He was transferred uh, last month uh, where he was reported to have slipped in the bathroom and suffering from injuries to his ribs and lungs over, uh, water over his lungs. And Ravia, what does this, uh, this appeal mean for the defendants who are, who are currently in jail? Well, don't forget that these, most of these defendants were on trial for multiple um, other charges, not just this specific trial. Shosni Mubarak himself was just slapped with new corruption charges uh, just last week, a few days ago. Um, he was uh, pressed, uh, he was given new corruption charges for accepting, uh, illegally accepting uh, rather uh, precious gifts from government institutions, and he was handed a 15-day incarceration order. Uh, his two sons are also on trial in multiple other cases uh, for stock market fraud, for profiteering. So it's not likely that we're going to see any of these defendants be released from incarceration pending those other corruption trials that they're facing.